today we're going to talk about this machine here, which is our wet high intensity magnetic separator. Um, people sometimes choose to, to process their material in a suspension, or wet as it were, for a, a number of reasons. One, they might have a process plant that is wet already, it might have wet bore mills, froth flotation, and then go to wet magnetic separation, so it suits their process flow sheet. They don't want to have an expensive process of wetting and drying material all the time. The other reason is often when material particles and minerals get very fine, they tend to develop quite a lot of electrostatic charge and clump together and don't flow very well on our drying machines. So often when you get down to size ranges, maybe below 100 microns, we will often consider processing them as a suspension through a wet magnetic separator like this one. So what we have here is uh, two uh, copper coils powered by a transformer rectifier here. And in the center here we have a gap which we put a matrix, which forms the matrix forms the, the holding part for the magnetic particles that I'm going to put through. Typically, uh, this is the, the transformer rectifier, will give us somewhere between zero and two tesla within the separating gap of the, um, the machine, which is enough to separate most minerals, basically, so it's a very powerful machine. The diff there are various types of matrices that we use for different particular applications, and I have a few of them here to show you. This one is a wedge wire matrices, which is often used for iron ore processing, uh, and has quite a high surface area, and will capture a, a, a large volume of material if we're concentrating and upgrading, at, say, an iron ore uh, material. So that's one type of uh, separator, a wedge wire separator. Often for we use a uh, what's called an expanded metal matrix separator, which gives, which is has much sharper points on it, which gives us high magnetic field concentration and allows us to capture very fine, um, relatively low magnetic uh, paramagnetic material. Often used for silica sand processing for removing one or two percent of iron oxides from a silica sand. They also allow uh, different grades of this material will allow you to process different size ranges of, of silica sand as well. So very flexible, and they form a sandwich within the uh, within the, the separating gap and uh, capture the particles that way. The final version is a very fine material like a kaolin, for example. Then we have a, a magnetic wire wall that we we put in, uh, which again ha has very sharp points on it, which gives us high field strength and high field gradient that allows us to separate very, very fine uh, magnetic particles in the order of minus two microns in size. So really, it's a, it's a, it's a very flexible machine um, if you choose the correct field strength and the correct matrices in the first place. So today, we are going to test a, 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 a sample that I've made up already. It is a calcium carbonate sample, uh, and also uh, in it, it has some hematite. The calcium carbonate is non-magnetic uh, in nature and won't be affected by the magnetic field. It contains about 2 or 3% hematite, which is Fe2O3, uh, which is a, 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 a medium paramagnetic mineral. So what we, what we do is we, we set the field strength of the machine to suit the material that we're processing. Uh, and we do that by calibrating the machine, and every machine comes with a calibration curve that you will see here in front of you. Um, that calibration curve is done uh, current on the transformer rectifier against uh, Tesla or Gauss within the, the gap of the machine. And as the current gets higher, then as you'd expect the Gauss gets greater. In the open gap of the machine, um, at the maximum Gauss level, uh, field strength, uh, set at 25 amps, we're getting about 1.6 tesla on, in the gap. When we put our different matrices in, that's concentrated up, and for the, the finest matrices that we're showing here, we're getting up to about 2 tesla in the separating area of the machine. For this particular sample, I don't need all that field strength. So if I set it to something like 1.5 amps, I should have enough magnetic field strength and force to separate out and hold our hematite and allow the calcium carbonate to pass through. So, the separating probe, so what I do is I, I put the bolt, adjust the amperage to the required level. We 
average for this separation is about 15 amps, plus or minus bits. Okay, I now know that within the separating uh, canister itself, I'm getting a sufficient field strength to allow the capture of the iron hematite ore. The suspension we, we feed into the, the machine is often dispersed. We put a dispersant in to allow it to separate out and the particles to not interact with each other. Normally we run at a suspension solids level of about 20% by weight is reasonable. Um, these machines are normally gravity fed, so we, it's, quite a, it's quite a simple process really. We just pour through while agitating the material through there, wash through any material that hasn't quite gone through, like that. Uh, so what's happening now is the magnet is holding the paramagnetic particles. The non-magnetic material has gone through, but what will be happening in the middle of there is that there will be some of the calcium carbonate stuck on the surface of the, of the matrices, so we tend to flush through with water to allow us to remove any entrained material that's not magnetic. That will allow us to get a, a more a, a purer magnetic concentrate. So, once that process has been done, I now have my non-magnetic fraction in that bucket there. I then put a fresh bucket underneath. I then turn the magnetic field off, which will release the trapped paramagnetic particles. And then I will flush through with some more water, like that. And that releases the uh, particles that are paramagnetic. Uh, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not sure you can see that, but if you see there, we have beautiful black mineral particles there. They're the paramagnetic hematite. And here we have the pure white calcium carbonate. Uh, material that will be of the required iron level for processing for the ceramics industry or papering. In this case, the paper industry is that material. So this is a highly flexible machine. Um, it's a lab version of industrial scale units that can be in carousel form or they can be batch filter type forms. But as a laboratory uh, piece of equipment, it's very, very useful indeed. So uh, we've sold a number of these recently into the university sector and the water treatment sector where they are used for investigation of different uh, mineral ores um, uh, and for doing magnetic analysis of a material. So, for example, if I had a material that I wasn't sure how uh, uh, that contained various different minerals that I want to remove from it, what I would do is I would set my machine at different gas levels, put the material through and, uh, and analyse the, the magnetic material that comes out and then put it on an X-ray fluorescence machine and an X-ray diffraction to see which mineral species are separated at which magnetic field strength, which allows us then to develop a flow sheet for those specific uh, mineral applications. And that's what we tend to do here quite a lot of the time.